You're still watching today with myself and Fundo Mabalan. We're having a very important debate now following that constitutional court judgment around the Procurement Act and the regulations. Peter, we were just speaking there about where we saw the minority judgment, Judge Mthansa, who wrote the pen that judgment, actually conceding that there were deficiencies here when we look at the act itself and the regulations, which must, in essence, give life to the act. You can never deviate. You must somehow draft regulations that are within the framework of the act. I know that Pete had an issue when I used the word technicality, but it is a significant judgment, but legally technical here. This is what they were, they were seized with as, as the jurists. Yes, well, as I said earlier, I think you, you touched on the key issue is that the Preferential Policy Procurement Framework Act actually sets out the, the way pro preferential procurement must be applied in practice. It is the and basically the issue is price has an 80% weighting for tenders under 50 million rand and price has a 90% word weighting for uh, tenders over 50 million rand. And that is actually in the statute. So the, 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 and the, that, that is really the root cause of, of problems that people have with the act. Now the constitution, and again, everything must be judged in terms of the constitution. The constitution says that state procurement must be fair, equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost-effective. And the Supreme Court of Appeal really focused on that aspect. The Constitution does say that you can have preferential procurement for historically disadvantaged persons with regard to the allocation of contract. And the, the Act, the Preferential Policy Procurement Framework Act, is, is also giving effect to a section of the Constitution. So it's, it's important to understand that from a legal perspective, the the issue of the powers of minister was the, was the key issue in the cases. But the implications, as I said earlier, is that the regulations have been declared invalid. And, mm -hmm. and what's also important to note is that the new procurement bill is going through Parliament, which is, is interestingly not prescribing that 80-20, 90-10 uh, rule in the statute itself, but giving the minister the, the obligation to prescribe a framework for preferential procurement going forward. So I think... What, what, what you'll see is in Judge Madlanga did actually say that what the minister should have done is either engage with organs of state with regard to how they determine their preferential procurement policy or actually amend the act, the act. as opposed exactly. to trying to, mm. to impose pre-qualification criteria through, through regulation. And the new procurement bill actually explicitly allows pre-qualification criteria and the preferential allocation of contracts. Mm -hmm. and, and perhaps to bring you in here, Kanki, I'm glad that you preface this debate by stating that it really isn't what others might think it's about, where it's a loss for BEE in that respect, since that is the agenda that you are pursuing. You were quick to state that it is one that speaks on just purely the scope. Just talk to me about what you've heard from people. I'm sure you got a lot of calls of people saying perhaps that the Constitutional Court here had somehow reversed the gains. What, what was the sentiment for some that didn't have full appreciation or hadn't yet read that judgment? Yeah, we, 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 we had a lot of stories and we, we referred people to, to go and read the, the judgment uh, because it's important that before you, you comment, you have to read. But, but our issue is that the, the Preferential Procurement Policy Framework Act of 2000 has not worked. Uh, and then hence we are saying the Minister of Finance must speed up the public procurement bill. And then we had engaged with the President and the Minister of Finance promised that during the state of, during the, 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 the budget speech, he will say something about that. But the closing date for comments was in 2020 and, and we are now in 2022. So it looks like uh, the state does not take transformation serious. We, well, when we look at the, 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 the now we're 22 years later after the Triple PFA Act was put in place, where we're sitting with the 70% of the CEOs of JSE listed companies are still white males, which tells you we're almost the same as during apartheid. Uh, and the, 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 the black people only own less than 5% of the economy. And, and that will include the people living with disabilities, young people, uh, uh, women. So it shows that, that the act itself is not working. So, so I agree that the minister should have either amended the act or, or repealed it. Because the, uh, from where we're sitting, the act is very, useful. It's very useless. Because it's still preferred white-owned companies 
instead of uh, black owned companies. Mm -hmm. Pete, your take, in as much as you want this one, you're hearing that there's still many advocating for that procurement bill to come into effect. Uh, what happens now? Because you do have concerns around perhaps what we call the pre-qualification in this instance. Where to from here for you? Because clearly the journey is still long. We've all of you agree that this one was not necessarily about BEE, but rather the inconsistency that existed where we have the Procurement Act as well as Section 217 of the Constitution and the regulations. So where to from here? Well, um, we are looking at other places where ministers have also exceeded the powers or where there are similar contradictions between regulations and what is allowed in the Act. We think, for example, competition law, which is another area in which BEE is, in our view, illegally being uh, implemented and used arbitrarily is to be investigated. So we will certainly expand our, our litigation against um, illegal uh, and unlawful expansions of, of, of absorptions of power. Um, uh, and the, the, the key thing there is to, to do two things. First, to protect the separation of powers, which is an important balance of powers within the state, um, uh, which has been neglected. And then secondly, to roll back BEE. This judgment is important because it has rolled back BEE, even though we didn't ask the court to roll back BEE, we asked the court to uphold separation of powers. Um, a BEE is now view very harmful. Um, uh, as much as um, Mr. Matabane uh, feels it is important to look at the ownership of companies or the business owners, we actually, even though we're a business organization, would argue that the purpose of business is not to make owners rich, the purpose of business or any tender or any product and service should be evaluated against what it means for the public. And any uh, regulation, any pre-disqualification, as we have seen, that harms the interest of the public, who does not put the public interest in terms of service delivery, goods and services first, that is harmful and against the common good. You've seen this um, in many tenders recently where simply the pool of services from which government or ESCOM or anybody could choose was was usually usually uh, made smaller, and uh, that was to the to the harm of the public. We should benefit from goods and services. So the way forward is to increase our litigation, um, it is to uphold the separation of powers, and it is to walk the road, even though the tide is slowly turning, um, to move away from BE because it is. Uh, it, it, I mean, it, it pretends to be about redress and empowerment, but in the end, it uh, puts the uh, pol politicians in charge of the economy instead of. Uh, preferring services to uh, the public, which is what it should be. It's a hard discussion to have, but that is the way it is. Mm -hmm. No, gentlemen, thank you very much for enriching conversation. I actually wish we had more time. It actually just actually even puts to rest another narrative now where some would have thought the courts are anti this or pro this, but really what the con court sought to do here was to answer a legal question. And they have answered just that. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That was Pete LaRue from Sakhalika and Hanki Matabane from the BBC, as well as Peter Stein from Verspans. Thank you very much.